What's up, Nail Geeks? I am back again with June's Polish Pickup for you all. I wanted to get this out quite a bit earlier this month, so I do apologize about getting it once again after wish listing has opened. However, um, the mail has been crazy, so um, here we are, and I have so much to show you all this time. So June's theme is Cocktails and Mocktails Part 2. This is the second part of it, and there are some good stuff. So I will quit rambling, and let's dive right into what I've got to show you all. So first up, we've got Alchemy Lacquers. She brings us Frambojito, which is described as a red-leaning raspberry jelly with pink to red to gold to green shifting shimmer and scattered shades of pink, red, orange, gold, green, shifting flakes, and gold micro hollow glitter. This is inspired by a classic mojito with a raspberry twist. Price would be $11.50 and there is a cap of $150 US and $5 UK. So the formula on Frambojito is um, quite a bit, in my opinion, on definitely on the jelly side, so definitely agree with the official description. It does plumb out very nicely and builds up and vamps out very nicely. I was a little worried that this was gonna be skewed on my monitor and watching the playback here, I think it is coming off just a touch lighter than what I'm seeing in person. So please note, this is maybe a shade or two deeper of a red, but still very vibrant and very laming, if you will. For the most part, I think people are gonna be just fine between two and three coats for this one. Of course, I did top off with a glossy top coat, and for color accuracy, definitely refer to my video. And Baroness X brings us a new acetone antidote this month in the scent Lit Dole Whip. This is a tart frozen pineapple scent from, um, of course, Disney. And it's this one is blended with rum. So I was very excited that I actually was very low on my pump. So I'm showing you guys basically how I do my refills. Um, I go ahead and fill up my bottle. That's roughly seven ounces of acetone. And then I dump the entire vial in. So this basically, you are mixing it with pure acetone and you get the power of, power of removal from the acetone, but it leaves a lingering scent behind on your cuticles and it softens your skin too. So now the scent on it is very pleasant. I'm definitely getting a strong pineapple scent with a touch of vanilla and there's an undertone of rum to it. It's very awesome. And Baroness X also brings us a fluid nail art duo. Both of these bottles are eight milliliters. There is Loco Unicorn, which is the pastel teal and Coco Berry, which is the pastel pink. Price on these will be 12 for the duo and there is no cap. So I want to throw it out there. When you do flip fluid nail art on your nails, there are so many ways to do this. So I'm going to show you guys the decal method. Um, this is what I consider to be a little bit easier. Um, if you guys demand it, I might just go ahead and do a separate video to show you guys um, different styles of this, but I digress. So when you make decals, you want to use a quick dry glossy top coat of some type, any type of quick dry top coat let it dry down on a silicone mat that's definitely necessary for this method because you're going to bend it here in a moment and then go in with several polishes of your choice it doesn't matter what they look like whether it's creams or hollows whatever i'm using two different types of creams that white and the purple and then i'm going in with a normal shimmery gold shade so you want to get all these dots on here and then you're going to take your mat and you can mush them mush it then messier you do it the better when you get your little mushed design on the mat then you're going to go in and do some dollops of the fluid nail art polishes so what this is going to do when you mush it one more time and once again messier the better when it dries down it's going to start making those little cells so it'll start separating your polishes that you've mushed on your decals so right here um, just fast forwarding real fast as those decals are drying down those cells are going to start forming so showing you guys here on my middle nail what it looks like after it's dried i went in pretty heavy on those non-fluid art polishes so i got smaller cells However, if you want the larger, more open type of look with how the polish separates, I'm definitely going just a touch thinner with the non-fluid art polishes. Pull up my decal, slap it on there, do some cleanup, finish off with a glossy top coat, and I'm good to go. And next we've got Blush Lacquers. She brings us Fig Berry Fizz. This is a lilac polish with a flurry of holographic micro flakes, rose gold metallic micro flakes, and shifting gold green blue multi-chrome flakes. This is inspired by a fancy fig cocktail. 
price is 12 and there is no cap on it. So this has a very curly like formula in my opinion. It's very smooth on the nail. Of course, you guys know I really enjoy paddle brushes and this applies very nicely with that brush. So here, on that first coat, I've got really nice coverage happening. For the most part, I can see most getting away with two coats on this one. Though, of course, if you go in thin, you might need a third coat just to kind of even everything out. So here on that second coat, much more opacity starting to build up. Really nice, smooth formula on it. Um, per usual, I give my bottles a good shake before applying. You guys know the drill. And I got really nice payoff between the shimmer and those micro flakes and all that good stuff. Now this one does dry down quite a bit on the satin and flat side, so personally I'd recommend a good glossy top coat to smooth everything in and really exploit that shimmer. And next we've got by Vanessa Molina. This is Zombie on Fire, described as a hot tone, as hot tones in a magnetic ultra chrome chameleon base with iridescent flakes. This is inspired by a Zombie on Fire cocktail. Price is 13 and there's a cap of 300 US and 20 UK. So on application, this one does have a bit of a jelly feel to me. It has a lighter formula, though it's very smooth and very pigmented given the um, multi-chrome pigment in it. So um, I, in lieu of my party trick with the magnet under my nail, I'm using, I'm basically showing you guys what it looks like without the magnet. I think this is really good for um, my swatch videos personally, so you guys can see what it looks like unmagnetized and magnetized. So if you weren't alone, I would say two coats for full opacity and it plumps out real nice. And then I'm going in with the magic magnetic top coat and you guys can see what it'll look like with the magnet. Now I'm switching it up a little bit and I'm using a ring magnet just to kind of uh, bring a little bit of variety to the table. And you can see those, the magnetic pigment has a very strong shift between pink to gold and those little flakes will go in the dark background. And next we've got Cameo Colors Lacquers. She brings us Blackberry Basil Moscow Mule. Described as a copper to gold to green ultra chrome base full of hollow sparkle, red, bronze, copper, and lime blue and gold UCC flakes, plus a smattering of silver hollow micro flakes. This is inspired by a Blackberry Basic Moscow Mule. Price is 12 and there's a cap of 95 US and 5 UK. So this has a very true curly light formula to me. It is very smooth on the nail. For the most part, I think two to three coats for full opacity will be just fine. Now, I personally took it up to three coats, but on the second coat here, you can see I've got really good opacity with it. Um, I personally felt like I could see just the tiniest little bit of my smile line on it. So I took it up to a third thin coat and I felt like it plumped it out really nice. So really gonna depend on how you apply with this one. For the most part in bright lights, you'll see a nice coppery type of sheen from the multi-chrome type flakes and shimmer happening with this one. And the flakes themselves will also give you a really lovely type of scattered effect that's really dense on the nail. So here on that third coat, like I was just saying, really nice plumping action happening here. And it does dry down a little bit on the flat side. So again, I'd recommend a really good glossy top coat just to exploit all those awesome pigments happening in this one. And Cupcake Polish brings us Pink Lemonade. This is a pink cream polish packed with orange to gold to green, shifting Aurora iridescent shimmer. This is inspired by Pink Lemonade. Price is 13 and there is no cap on it. So the formula on this one to me feels somewhat curly like given that to build it up, it feels like a jelly, but it does have a very smooth creaminess on your brush strokes. So kind of gonna depend on how you apply on this one. For the most part, I'm gonna suggest three thin coats on it, and you'll see here in just a moment between the second and third coat, just how it builds up. This is really lovely on that base color. It's a very flattering type of pink. I think it's gonna pop on just about any skin tone. And I say that mostly because I personally, um, given that I'm very warm toned and quite picky on pink. So I think this one is a really flattering shade. Now, as you build it up, that shimmer is very, very strong. In bright lights and indoor lighting, you're gonna see a bit of an orangey type of goldish shimmer happening with it. It's pretty strong in person. And at angles, of course, you'll have a very um, extreme green type of shift happen too with it. So now this one does dry down kind of semi-flat, but regardless, I think a really good glossy top coat is really going to exploit that shimmer and bring out um, all of those little shifty glowing feelings with it. So you can see here on that third coat, really nice plumping action. 
Like I said, I think three thin coats with it is really gonna flatter it the best. Though, of course, completely up to your personal preference. Um, and then here on the final shot, you can see that glossy top coat applied. Just a really strong type of Aurora shimmer against that lovely pink base. And next, Cuticula brings us Purple Passion. This is a deep purple jelly with iridescent shifting flakes, blue to green micro flakes, green metallic micro flakes, blue metallic micro flakes, turquoise metallic micro flakes, and ultra hollow silver hollow micro flakes. This is 12 and there is no cap on it. So this one is definitely a jelly. However, I feel like the formula and how it felt during application is what I would classify in the somewhat heavier feel for jellies. And I don't mean that in a bad way as it's very smooth on the nail and easy to build up. So for the most part, I think two to three coats for this one and everyone's gonna be happy. Personally, I took it up to three thin coats and I really thought that it plumped out very, very nice on the nail and it really brought out that base color. So I do feel like watching the playback here on the video, I think this is coming out color accurate to what I'm seeing in person. It's a very deep, intense, dark purple, though it still allows for all of the flakes in this one to really stand out against that base color. So it's just jelly enough so you can see all the little plethora of colors here but it's also rich enough that it really plumps out almost like a cream in the final look. So here I'm going in with Cuticula's Limitless Top Coat. I'll get to that in just a moment. And you can see how it really glosses out once you get a glossy top coat on it. And I think it really exploits all of the flakes happening with this one. Now, speaking of Cuticula's Limitless Top Coat, she is also offering the Limitless Top Coat and Nail Nectar Duo, both scented in the scent Wild Passion Fruit Bellini. The Duo, both the cuticle oil and the top coat are both gonna be 16 for both of them. And there is a cap of 280 US and 10 UK for the Duo. So I did some nail art going along with the cocktail theme and I'm applying the Limitless Top Coat here and you can see with the bead method, just get quite a bit loaded up on your brush, a nice little bead and then softly place that top coat across your nail art and you'll get no smearing and lots and lots of glossy goodness with it. Now here is the cuticle oil. This is quite a larger type of doe foot applicator with it, which personally I really like as I like to just slather on cuticle oil when I'm going to use it. I prefer to use it in the morning and night. And if I'm washing my hands a ton, definitely slathering it on then too. So I really dig that this one really picks up quite a bit of product. So I think with the formula of the cuticle oil on this one, a little bit goes a long way. Of course, this is pretty much how I apply after swatching at the end of my swatching sessions because I'm my skin is so dry at the end. So when you're going in between your day, I think a little dollop on each nail and you're just fine. Like I said, a little bit goes a long way. So the scent on both of these is very pleasant. I do get a somewhat effervescent scent with it, but I mostly get a really lovely passion fruit kind of peachy kind of scent with it. Both are very pleasant and the scent and the top coat is also scented to match. And next we've got DRK Nails. She brings us Hurricane. This is a violet jelly base mixed with micro flakes in the iridescent shift of red to pink to green, Aurora and iridescent flakes in orange to green. And this is inspired by the cocktail of a hurricane, yum. And the price is 13 and there is a cap of 300 US and 25 UK. So this has a very true jelly-like feel on application. As you build it up, it's definitely gonna intensify in the both base, base color and all of those little iridescent flakes. Now I want to note that my swatches of this one leaned quite a bit hot. Um, it really took on the appearance of a really strong pink, which it is but in person you can tell in like the corners of your nail that there's a lovely violet purpley type of base happening with it. So in the final look, you'll definitely see a very strong pink fuchsia almost type of glow with it. I do feel like the video is a better representation of what you're gonna see in bright lights. Um, I just think my swatches kind of blew up in terms of all of the flakes and my camera's just zooming in on that. So please note for decent representation in my opinion, um, definitely, the full hand shot here will give you a better idea. So this does dry down a little bit on the flat side. So again, I'd recommend a really good glossy top coat. And DRK Nails is also bringing us her clingy base. This is a base coat that helps apply glitters and flaky polishes. And to achieve the best results, you're gonna 
layer it over any type of base, let it dry for about a minute, and then you can apply flakies or glitters. So the price on this one will be eight, and there's a cap of 150 US and 25 UK. So I'm showing you guys what it looks like using the clingy base and then without. So on my middle nail, I went ahead and applied a coat of the clingy base. Now each of your bottles will come with a small vial of iridescent glitter, which is very similar in my opinion to her glitter kit that she released a few polish pickups ago. I'm going in with a stamper and applying it just how I normally do. And you can see the glitter payoff is pretty awesome. I normally like to brush it off a little bit, get any excess that's sticking around. And then I'm gonna go in with the same stamper and glitter and show you guys on my ring finger how it looks without any clingy base applied. So just going in normally, like how I normally do it, as you guys can see from both nails, you'll get a lot more glitter payoff using the clingy base. So in my opinion, this is really good for loose glitter application like this or loose flaky application. And Emily to Molly brings us Kulth. This is described as a turquoise blue curly with matte white glitters inspired by blue margaritas. Price is 10 and there's a cap of 150 US and 20 UK. So this has a very creamy plumping type feel on application. Um, definitely agree with the official description. It's a curly, really smooth, application on it very buttery type of formula now for the most part i think two coats is going to satisf satisfy most on this one as it plumps out really nicely and it self levels really wonderfully on the nail too so i feel like the video is coming out color accurate i also felt like my swatches were doing a decent job of the color representation with that base color however i want to note depending on your light source um, this one will lean just a little bit green or a little bit blue really interesting um, i do feel like that's very typical of a true turquoise that's vibrant like this one so um, regardless I think it's flattering and popping now going in with a glossy top coat on this one I had no texture on it the glitters gave me no problems um, and I think honestly just about any top coat will be just fine with it next we have is Malthus the Kelly she brings us taste the rainbow this is a clear base with gold orange red blue green royal blue violet holographic glitters silver mic micro flakes iridescent flakes in various colors inspired by a rainbow drink price is $12.50 and there is no cap on it so you guys know I love glitter bombs and this brand really brings it when it comes to full coverage glitters so for the most part between two and three coats and I think everyone's gonna be just fine so I personally took it up to two coats and I thought it looked just great on its own now please note this is definitely a true glitter bomb so it's quite thirsty for top coat um, and to smooth it out. So on the full hand shot here in just a moment, I did top off with Esmalte Stichelli's um, Glitter Smoothing Duo, which was offered, I believe last month, if memory serving me correct, and I didn't have any texture with it. So you'll definitely wanna use something to help smooth out glitters. And in the final look, you'll get lots and lots of glitter payoff. And Fair Maiden Polish brings us Ain't No Laws. This is an orange to yellow thermal with rose golden green shimmer and orange to gold to green iridescent flakes. This is orange when cool and yellow when warm. This is inspired by Mango White Claw. Price is 11 and there is no cap on it. So this has a true um, jelly-like formula to me, though it is very smooth and very plump on application. So for the most part, I think between two and three coats and you'll be just fine. So please note, friendly reminder, I am in the south, so um, I'm typically running very warm this time of year. And I wanted to um, definitely point out that this is crazy reactive for the thermal properties. For the warm state is exactly what you're seeing here. It's a very bright type of sunny type of yellow. And in the cold state, it's a very warm type of orange. So really nice in between both of them. There's tons and tons of little tiny iridescent flakes here with this one too. So as you build it up, you'll get a really um, luminescent type of effect with it. So this does also dry down on the flat side. So again, I'm gonna recommend a glossy top coat just to get a really nice plump factor with it. And you can see here on the full hand shot, that's um, pretty much both states. It really, really was reactive for me. So with the ice water, you guys can get a better idea of the cold state with it. Um, really nice obvious transition between both colors and really really reactive and glistening glow brings us mountain dew mocktail this is a neon yellow jelly loaded with various shapes and sizes of black and black hollow glitters 
This is inspired by a twist on the classic Mountain Dew soft drink. Price is $12.50 and there is no cap on it. So this has a very smooth, buttery type of formula with it. Really easy to apply. Now I want to note that this is another one that's gonna be a little bit of a uh, tricky little minx depending on what lighting you're in. I do think that the video is being color accurate to what I'm seeing here in person. Um, bottom of the line, this is a neon Mountain Dew color. So um, really on the limey type of neon yellow side, but it just looks like Mountain Dew, if that makes sense. So definitely uh, captured the drink in its essence. Now this plumps out really nice. So honestly, I think between two and three coats, everyone's gonna be happy. I personally took it up to a third thin coat just to kind of even everything out as I saw just a touch of my visible nail line in the final look. So this one's really gonna depend on um, how prominent your free edge is and your application style and all that good stuff. And of course, Glisten and Glow also is offering her quick dry glossy top coat this month. This will be $7.50 and there is no cap on it. So for the most part, you guys know who have been watching my videos for the last few months, I've been using this top coat a ton. It's an awesome top coat. It does not smear nail art and it adds a really nice glossy finish to your nails too. And Lemming Lacquer brings us Jedi Mind Trick. This is a smoky turquoise hollow with pink to gold to green multi-chrome. This is, of course, inspired by a Disney cocktail. Price is 13 and there is a cap of 250 US and 25 UK. Um, the formula to it is really, really flirting with being a one coater, in my opinion. Um, personally, I'm going to suggest going in with two thin coats on it just to really maximize that nice plumping factor. Um, very, very smooth coverage, lots of opacity happening with it. Like I said, tons of hollow rainbows with it. In the sun, it's going to light up and I'm really digging that base color. You can definitely see that it's a nice dusky type of turquoise in the background, but what really takes center stage between the hollow is the shimmer in this one. So it's got a nice multi-chrome type of effect. So in bright lights, you'll get that nice pinkish type of effect and it angles a nice gold to green shift. This one does dry down a little bit on the flat side. So again, I'd recommend a good glossy top coat just to really exploit all the good stuff happening here. And next we have MLF Lacquer. This is Sunlight, described as a red-orange jelly base with gold flakes, gold shimmer, and silver holographic flakes. This is inspired by a beer from a local brewery called Sunlight. Price is 11 and there is a cap of 190 US and 10 UK. So this is a very vibrant type of orange. It's really in your face. In my opinion, it's kind of flirting with being a neon almost, um, but it doesn't have that highlighter quality, but it's still very brilliant and vibrant on your nails. So being that this is a new to the channel brand, I was very impressed with the formula on it. This is really flirting with being almost a one coater. So once again, I'm going to recommend going in with two coat, two thin coats on it, and you'll have a really nice plumping factor. So really nice opacity happening on this one and really vibrant overall. The shimmer here is going to give it a little bit of an orange type of glow with it. So um, interesting. One of those base colors that's flirting with being a very vibrant orange with just a tiny touch of a red tinge. And Night Owl Lacquer brings us Magical. This is a neon green curly with multi-chrome flakes that shift green to blue to purple and bright aqua shimmer sparks. This is inspired by a magical color changing cocktail. Price is $12.50 and there is no cap on it. This has a true curly like formula to me. It's very smooth on application and for opacity, I'm going to suggest two to three coats on it, depending once again on your preference. You'll get excellent flaky payoff with this one. They're in a variety of sizes, so you'll get a nice pond effect between your layers. Um, so here on that second coat, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, those who are new to polish world and all that good stuff, a pond effect is basically when you have a jelly or a lighter formula type polish, you'll be able to see the layers of flakes or sometimes glitters in between and it makes a really cool type of effect. So you can see here on that third coat, um, there's a bit of a dimension going on with it that you can see the flakes on each of the layers. So the flakes themselves are definitely multi-chrome, so they'll shift between purples and blues and um, a little bit of a limey type of green, really pretty. I had no texture with this one and no issues with any of the flakes. And of course I topped off with a glossy top coat, which PS in this video is, uh, glisten and glows. And next we have Polish. She brings us Champagne Float. This is a soft champagne pink with a mix of golden and iridescent flakes with bright pink shimmer. 
This is inspired by a champagne float. Price is 13 and there is no cap on it. So this has a true jelly light formula to it, but it does have just a bit of squish on those brush strokes. I was really digging this one as it's delicate and it's a really nice neutral type of pink that I think is um, very flattering, especially if you're warm tone like myself. As you build it up, there's a pond effect happening with this one too and those little iridescent flakes. And there's that lovely, lovely golden type of um, fleck effect in the background. So those are really tiny little flakes. Um, really gives that nice, just delicate feel to it. I could see this one almost being like a bridal polish, if you will. It's just neutral, but just a little bit of um, like a chic type of sparkle happening with it. Now, because in my opinion, it is of the softer type of formula, this is really going to depend on your preference for wearing it at two or three coats. So on the third coat here, I went in very thin just to kind of really amp up that plumping factor with it. Please know, I think if you've got a prominent free edge, you're going to see just a bit of your smile line with it. So if that bugs you, of course, a color correcting base will definitely work out for you. Otherwise, I think it's purposeful like this. It's soft and it's just really delicate and lovely. And next we have Penelope Luz. She brings us Pitaya drink. This is a vibrant violet jelly base with iridescent flakes in warm tones and a little pink and gold glitter to shine. This is inspired by a Pitaya's, I'm going to say this wrong, Caprina, and it's a delicious fruit that has that really awesome color. Price on this one is 13 and there is no cap on it. So this is definitely a jelly base, but it is very, very opaque on application. For the most part, I think everyone's going to be just fine at two coats with it. You'll see here in just a moment that the difference between this coat right here and that second coat is um, really, really drastic. It's really awesome. So the flakes in this one are very prominent. There's lots of different sizes here and you'll get that really nice deep type of violet base color, but on the second coat, it kind of vamps out a little bit and you'll get just a ton of a bit of what I consider um, like a mosaic type of effect because there is just so much flakes with it. Now this one does dry down on the flat side. So again, I'm going to recommend a really good glossy top coat and you'll get those sparkles to pop like crazy. And Poetry Cowgirl Polish brings us Midnight Manhattan. This is a deep reddish copper shimmer with added sparkle inspired by a Midnight Manhattan. Price is 11 and there is no cap on it. So the formula on this one is a bit on the jelly like side in my opinion. Um, Personally, I think this is going to really depend on your application preference. It's very creamy and smooth on the brush strokes, but for um, full opacity, like I said, two to three coats on this one, and I think most, and I think everyone will be just fine. I do agree that with the official description that it's a deep reddish type of copper, and I do feel like the video is being color accurate to what you guys are seeing in person. Um, it does, true to jelly fashion, uh, definitely darken out as you go on with your coats. So here on that second coach, you can see I've got pretty good opacity happening with it. Um, so really, really good depend on your preference for it. Here on the final shot, once again, I got a glossy top coat on and I am good to go. And Quixotic Polish brings us Mom and Mom. This is an ocean blue base swimming with stunning pink to gold to green iridescent flakes. This is inspired by Snoop's Gin and Juice, My Mind on My Money, and My Money on My Mind. Price is 12 and there is a cap of 350 bottles with it. So the formula on this one is definitely curly like It's got quite a bit of a squish factor with it when you are applying. For the most part, I think everyone's going to be pretty happy at two coats. It's really going to depend on how you apply. Um, I try to be definitive about it, but polishes like these, it's just going to depend on your nail length and if you go in real thin, all that good stuff. But I digress. So on the second coat, this is um, very true to a jelly-like style in that it really darkens out on that second coat. So going in for a third coat, of course, will make it a lot darker and richer. But honestly, that second coat, um, I pretty much had full coverage and I didn't feel the need to uh, go any more up to a third coat. So really nice self-leveling action happening with it. Really smooth formula, no issues with the flakes and I got a really good payoff with them. I don't think my swatches did this one justice um, with how the flakes pop against that base color. So um, I think it kind of muted it. So definitely refer to the full hand shot for how the flakes appear. 
And Supernatural Lacquer brings us all of a sudden. This is an olive jelly base with purple, blue, red ultra chrome flakes inspired by Bloody Mary olives. Price is 12 and there's a cap of 125 US and 10 UK. So this was a surprise love for me. I don't typically go for um, what some would call the Prugly colors, but I can definitely see the appeal after this one. So um, this has a true jelly base to it. However, um, I do want to note that the formula is incredibly smooth on application. It is really like hot melted butter. It's very, very smooth and it plumps out really nice. So the flakes in this one obviously are very prominent. So as you build it up, once again, we'll get a nice pond effect from it. And they really appear and they're very obvious in a purple to blue, almost red type of shift with them. And I would suggest going in with three thin coats on this one just to really exploit those flakes and get a ton of them on your nail. I think they look really cool against that base color. Um, this is definitely an olive green, really nice, smooth coverage with them. I mean, the flaky payoff was pretty awesome on this one. So going in for that third coat, you can see here, this is when it starts plumping out real nice. Um, honestly, I think that even though the formula is just a little bit on the lighter side, there is a touch of your free edge that you might see if, you're, if your free edge is prominent like myself. However, I think it looks just awesome. Just really interesting color combo here. And next we've got Vapid Peacock Tail. This is described as a teal shade with green to blue to violet shifting shimmer and linear holographic flame. This one will be capped at 300 US and 20 UK. So the formula on this is very rich, very smooth, another excellent buttery type of formula with it. For the most part, I think two coats and everyone's going to be good to go. This is really heavily flirting with being a one coater as well. So if I went just a touch heavier with it, um, I definitely could have gotten away with one coat. Now, personally, I like the really plump type of effect that I'm always talking about. So I would suggest going in um, light to normal coats with this one and go up to two coats. And I think it has a really nice plump appearance in the end. I know I'm always talking about that and I hope that makes sense to you guys. So when you build it up, um, you'll get a really nice teal type shade. Now I feel like my swatches didn't do this one justice once again, um, but the, there's a strong shimmer happening with it. I think the video is a little more representative of what I'm seeing in person. Lots of hollow happening with it. And lastly, we have Wetcha. This is Maleficent Drink, described as an electric purple curly with red glitter inspired by the Disney Maleficent drink. Price is 13 and there is a cap of 200 US and 20 UK. I was really worried how this was gonna come across in terms of color accuracy. I think my swatches got um, better than what I was expecting to be honest. And the video shockingly, and at least to me it was shocking, I was expecting it to just really blow it up. I'm pretty impressed that it didn't uh, skew the color too much. This is definitely an electric purple, um, pretty much neon in my opinion. I do feel like the video, I don't know, I'm, my mind is just blown on this. I thought this was going to look so awful on the monitor, um, but it does not. It looks pretty much what I'm seeing in person. Now this is a new to the channel brand. I was very impressed with the formula on this one too. So um, good job newbies on that part. Um, this has a really lovely dense type of formula to it with a really strong self-leveling effect, very creamy and smooth on application. And I had no problems with the glitters um, or anything like that. So this also dries down on the flat side, um, typical to very vibrant pigments like this one. So once again, I'm going to recommend a glossy top coat. Now, Polish Pickup is of course open up for wish listing um, as of right now with me recording this and the shop will open up for shopping on June 5th at 10 a.m. Eastern time and will run until June 8th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. I'll link you guys below to Polish Pickups shop to check out the site. There's lots of good stuff this month once again. And I'll also link you guys, of course, to Polish Pickups Facebook group, um, all kinds of info in there, including voting for August's theme. So let me know down in the comment section what you guys think of June's, what's on your wish list, what are you hoping to get, all that good stuff. Last month, I went kind of crazy on the bath and body stuff, and um, this month, I'm probably going to do the same, to be honest. 
lots and lots of good stuff. I was a little worried about the theme, um, how it was going to be interpreted. Honestly, I expected a lot of dark colors, but um, really nice surprise at how everything was just so much of a variety. There's so many different colors. Um, and of course, I was excited about the bright stuff, all the nail art stuff, and just the really nice finishes and mixes overall. So let me know below what you guys think of that. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you guys so, so much for watching.